Uh, as a combat veteran, uh, uh, this breaks my heart. Uh, this is... Th these cost overruns are, are, are is, this is money not going to the care of our veterans. Uh, and we've got to finish this hospital. We've got to hold those accountable who are responsible for this. And we've got to make sure it never happens again. Another black guy for the Veterans Administration. That was Congressman Mike Kaufman of Colorado. They're talking about a hospital in Denver. U.S. Senators involved in this, the top VA officials also, that half-finished hospital in Denver, an eyesore right now, and a source of pain for a lot of vets out there. All part of this dispute, sparking an investigation into the over $1 trillion that's already been spent on that unfinished industry and, or, uh, facility, I should say. And joining me now to talk about this is Chris Peranto, a former Army Ranger and military contractor, also co-author of 13 Hours at Benghazi. Chris, always great to talk to you. Yeah, John. Thanks for having me on again. I, I really appreciate it. Yeah, and uh, yeah, let's get into this. This is this is something that's very disturbing, especially uh, with the amount of money that could have been put into the veterans facility. And that's uh, just it. Colorado. We heard yeah. the congressman talk about that a little bit. We know there needs to be more facilities and more access for veterans to health care. But what does it say to you and other vets about the promises made from the top on down about how things are going to change? It. it, it to me, it sounds like they're more concerned about money and, and, and their own pocketbooks. They're not doing the due diligence to, to make sure the people in charge uh, or the people who are going to be running these contracts have the experience or that are have the integrity to do it. So um, it, it just shows a failure of leadership again and again and again. And now veterans, again, are, are taking the, the short end of the stick. Yeah, and that's and, where we're at. And we got VA Secretary Bob McDonald saying that the department is yeah. struggling to treat veterans because it's so cash-strapped, and yet... Here they are looking at wasting yeah. millions, perhaps even a billion dollars uh, for this facility. So uh, is the government or is the administration or the VA, of course, are they lying to us again? I, it just seems like we, we get lie after lie after lie. And, well, McDonald's and, relatively new on the job, Chris, you know, but this problem obviously goes back a, a ways here. Should we cut him some slack on this or is it time to start no, talking about a guy no. to replace McDonald? You got to if, if you can't do the job. You're put in that situation. You don't get the chance to keep trying and trying. You're in that situation because you're an expert. If you can't handle the job, then hire him and get somebody else in there. Shinsheki set him up for failure maybe from the beginning, but this guy was touted to come in and be able to fix it right away, and obviously he's not doing it. And it, it, it looks like it even got worse. I don't think we had anything like this under Shinsheki. So, uh, so no, you get rid of him and you get somebody else in there. And if yeah. you can't handle it, then you get somebody else in there. Well, one more thing we're going to talk about, Chris, before we let you go here, is an, an article by the Wall Street Journal talking about U.S. special operations right now. Quote, over yeah. the past year, special operations forces have landed in 81 countries, mostly to train local troops yeah. to fight so Americans don't have to. But you hear about that. 81 countries we're hearing now that the sun never yeah. sets on U.S. special operations. Is This is part of the president's initiative here. Is this a sustainable policy for our special operations? Um, I, I, you're you're going to have to expand them a bit. They're going to wear out just like anybody else. They wear out, but they are warriors, brother. They, they will fight and they will continue to go on until they can't fight anymore. So uh, it is sustainable for the time being, maybe for another five, six years, but you're going to have to expand them. You're going to have to get more people to replace them. Yeah, that's a little concerning when we hear that this conflict that we see going out throughout the region could last decades, according to some. Chris Peranto, co-author of the book 13 Hours at Benghazi. Always great to get your take on these types of issues, sir, and we'll have you back very soon. Thanks, John. Have a great day. That's our